The stock market has been booming. The S&P 500 is up around 5% between January 1st, 2024 and today. It's up around 25% from one year ago and today. And it's up around 75% from just five years ago and today. Now, naturally, anytime you see the stock market rise this quickly, yeah, people start to worry about a potential bubble or a potential market crash, and people are worried about buying too high right before the market starts to go down. So what I want to do today is go over two things. Number one is I want to go over Wall Street sentiment about the stock market and where the stock market is heading. And then number two is I want to talk about things you need to understand as an investor about investing your money into the stock market. That way, you don't lose your money as an investor. Now, of course, investing in money has risks. You can't always bypass all that, and you're never guaranteed to make money you invest. In fact, you will probably lose money at some point, which is why you should always do your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. But let me start by talking about Wall Street's sentiment about where the stock market is headed, especially in 2024. Let me start by talking about Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs put out a statement saying that the S&P 500 will keep rising in 2024. Now, just so we're on the same page, the S&P 500 is a basket of the 500 largest companies on the United States stock market. So when you hear people talking about the S&P 500, it is a small sample of the total stock market, but it's made up of the 500 largest companies. So now when Goldman Sachs comes out and they say that they expect the S&P 500 to break new highs in 2024, the reason why you want to understand and listen to this is just kind of paying attention to the trends that they've been saying. So back in December of 2023, just a couple of months ago, Goldman Sachs came out and said that they expect the S&P 500 to reach 4,700 points. As of today, it's right around that 5,000 point mark. So in December, they thought that it might reach 4,700. By last month, they adjusted their number and said that the S&P 500 will reach 5,100 points. And then just now, Goldman Sachs came out again and said that the S&P 500 according to them, is going to reach 5,200 points. So this is where now Goldman Sachs has been upwardly revising their expectations of what's going to happen in the stock market in 2024. But they're not as optimistic as other banks like UBS. UBS is the most bullish, meaning the most optimistic about the United States stock market in 2024. Well, UBS said is that they believe now that the S&P 500 will make its way all the way up to 5,400 points by the end of 2024. That's right around an 8% increase from where we are today. Now again, more than just what they're saying today, you want to understand the kind of trend of what they believed about the stock market. They originally believed that the S&P 500 would reach 4,850 points by the end of the year. Then last month, they readjusted the number to 5,100 points, just like Goldman Sachs. And just recently, they came out and said that they believe that the S&P 500 is going to reach 5,400 points. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is not so you go out and invest your money based off of what the banks say, and not to go out and predict what is going to happen in the stock market. But rather, I want you to understand now what Wall Street's general sentiment is, but then understand how you can use this sentiment and how you can actually invest your money in the stock market as a smart investor, not as a trader, not as an emotional person, but rather as a smart investor who's investing their money on financials and not based off of emotions. So let's talk about now what this means for you. And of course, if you want to stay up to date on what's going on with things like what banks are saying, what's going on in the economy, the housing market, the stock market, crypto, and the global economy, my team at Briefs Media puts together a free newsletter every day that breaks down all of this into a fun, witty, and easy-to-read email. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning, and it's completely free. So if you want to join Market Briefs, i got the link to hike and join down in the description below, or you can go to briefs.co slash market if you'd like to join. So now, what does this mean for you? Well, let me start with this. Markets go up and markets go down. No market can go straight up forever. You have to understand that because what's going to happen is eventually we're going to see a stock market pullback. Eventually, we're going to see a stock market crash. And a lot of people are going to say, what the heck? 
I invested my money into this thing, the S&P 500. It had been going up year after year after year. It went up 75% in just a few years. And then I put my money in and then I see my money lose 20% just like that. And this is where I want you to remember and understand that markets go up and markets go down. But let's talk about history now. We have seen a stock market crash or recession pretty much every decade for the last century. We saw market crash and recession in 2020. We saw market crash and recession in 2008. We saw market crash and recession in the year 2000 slash 2001. But what we have seen happen in each one of these recessions over the last century is even if you invest your money right before the market crash, if you invest your money at the peak, well, you're going to go through all that anxiety as the market goes down. But the market recovered each and every time. Now, when I say the market, I don't mean individual companies. We have seen companies go bankrupt. We've seen companies go to zero. I'm talking about the broad economy, the broad stock market, like the S&P 500. So if you invested in the S&P 500 before the 2008 crash, well, you would have gone through a lot of pain during the years 2008, 2009. But then markets started to recover and they were breaking new highs by 2012. Just like that in 2020, when the pandemic hit, if you bought your money, bought your stocks, the S&P 500, right before the market crashed, you would have gone through a lot of pain. But if you held on, well, you would have made a lot of money. And this is where now you want to understand what is your goal as an investor? Because most people go into investing with no real plan, goal, or strategy. What they do is they look for the next NVIDIA, the next Tesla, the next Amazon. And when they hear of these nice companies on Reddit or on a Discord channel or wherever, they want to go out and just buy that company without really understanding the financials, without understanding how they want to buy, without understanding the goals, without understanding when they should sell. They just go out and buy it because they hear this is a good stock to purchase. Now, you can make money that way, but you can also lose money just as fast. I mean, you're essentially gambling because you have no real analysis. And this is why one of the things that I like to say is that for 90 to 98 percent of Americans, you should not be investing in individual companies because when you're investing in individual companies like this, you're essentially trading. I am not an advocate for trading. I am not a trader. I don't know how to trade. I tried it. it doesn't work for me. I am an investor. And the way you make money as an investor is you invest your money for the long term. That means you put your money into this thing, whether it's a stock or a fund like the S&P 500, and you hold on to it for the long term. Not just a year, many years, if not decades. That's where real wealth is built. So now, when we talk about what is your investing strategy, you have a lot of people trying to figure out, well, where's the market going to move in the next six months so they can make an investing decision? When the better question is, what is your investing goal? Because if you are... 25, 35, 45, even 55, and you have a decade, two decades, three decades, four decades plus ahead of you, you don't need to be that worried about what's happening in the stock market for the next six months or even the next six years if you're investing your money for the long term. And this is where you have to understand what is your investing goal and your investing strategy. Remember, markets go up and markets go down. When markets go down, it creates huge buying opportunity. But the only people that will end up actually buying are the people that are financially educated enough to understand how to buy, when to buy, and they have the money to go out and actually buy. Most people in that situation, even if you have money, are too scared to buy. I know this from experience because I saw the 2020 pandemic and I was talking about this publicly on my YouTube channel about how I'm buying on the way down and everybody in the comments kept talking about how this is a horrible time to buy because markets are crashing. I saw it again in the 2008 crash because that's when I started buying real estate and I was buying stocks. And during that time, nobody wanted to go out and invest their money. Even the people that had money were saying that investing in real estate is a horrible investment when real estate properties are being sold at 80, 90% off. And this is where you got to understand now, what is your strategy? If you just want to invest your money into the markets, well, you can invest your money into funds, ETFs, index funds, mutual funds that will give you exposure to the broader economy. For example, I've been talking about the S&P 500. There are funds that will give you exposure to the S&P 500. That's the 500 largest companies in the stock market. There are funds that will give you exposure to the total stock market. Now, again, I can't tell you what to go out and invest in. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you kind of the basics of things you need to understand. There are funds like SPY. If you invested in SPY, 
That is an ETF that will give you exposure to the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the stock market. There are funds like VTI that will give you exposure to the total stock market. Now, if you go out and invest in these funds today and markets were to crash in eight months, you're going to be sad because, oh my God, I'm losing money. But what you have to remember is, are you a long-term investor and what's your investing strategy? The way that you make real wealth through these types of funds is not by investing your money one time. It's by investing your money week after week after week, month after month after month, year after year after year. That way now, every time you get paid, some of your money is going out to buy these investments, to buy these funds, and we just keep stacking these assets. That's how you really build wealth through these types of funds. Now, again, if you were to see a market crash, the thing that you want to do is not panic and sell and freak out and stop everything, is use that as an opportunity to go out and buy. Use that as an opportunity to buy more stocks at a discounted price because markets go up and markets go down. Now, if you want to be the type of person that invests in individual companies, fine. You can do that. I do that too. But you have to understand when you invest in companies, that's going to take more work. And if you really want to make money, well, you can mitigate some of the risk by understanding how to invest. That means understanding how to research companies. How do you read the financial statements, the balance sheet? How do you understand how to read the cash flow statement? How do you understand how to read the income statement? How do you understand what the executive structure is like in the company? How do you understand the moat of the company? These are the type of things you want to be investing in learning. You can watch YouTube videos, you can read books, you can take classes, but you got to understand if you want to be investing in individual companies, the way that you can make more money or at least mitigate your risk is about understanding a little bit more about how you actually can find good companies. But now this is where, going back to the theme of this video, we have seen markets grow a lot in the last number of years. The S&P 500 has grown by around 75% in just the last five years. Does this mean that the market has to crash tomorrow? No. Does this mean that the market can grow another 75% in the next five years? Maybe. Is it likely? Who knows? See, the game isn't trying to predict what's going to happen in the next few years, but the game was to keep consistently going out and buying whether or not the market's up or down. That way you can accumulate more of the market because the way you build wealth as an investor is by building more equity. That's ownership in the markets. And if you want to really just invest your money and own the market, you can do that by investing in funds that give you exposure to the market without having to try to go out and find the perfect company. And the reason why that's so important is because a couple of decades ago, companies like Bed Bath & Beyond and Sears would have been some of the hottest companies to invest in on the stock market. Those were the innovators. Those were the killers. Those were the companies that were dominating. Well, if you kept investing your money into those companies, you would have lost all of it by now. And so this is where if you're really investing for retirement to build that wealth, you can mitigate some of the risk by investing in funds because if one company goes bankrupt, well, your fund can kick that company out and put another company in there. And it's also balanced by all the other winners in that company. So understand now what is your investing strategy and understanding, yeah, we've seen the markets grow up a lot. But if you want to make money, whether markets are up or down, you have to have a strategy where markets are up and down. That means when markets are down, use it as an opportunity to buy. When markets are up, use it as an opportunity to just realize your gains Realize some of those profits. That way you can win in both scenarios, but that requires the right financial education and for you to keep investing your money and understanding what is your strategy because you have to have a strategy if you want to make money, actually, as an investor. Now with that, I'll see you tomorrow.